we're going to sketch a graph of these parametric equations. We got our x equation here, our y equation right here. I've already lined up the x and the y in our table of values. Our t values are greater than or equal to negative 1. I like interval notation, so I'm going to write it as interval from negative 1 to infinity. And I've already lined up our increasing t values from negative 1. Now, I didn't go all the way to infinity. I stopped at 3. You may need to go a little further than 3, but I think this will be enough for our graph. I did the y's first because this particular parametric equation is very simple. Just take the t value, add 1 to it. So when t is negative 1, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. t is 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, t is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. When t is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3. When t is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. All right, that's all the y values. Now we're going to look at the x values. So we got negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1. So negative 1 squared is 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Next up we got 0, 0 squared plus 0, which is 0. 1 squared plus 2 times 1, so that's 3. 2 squared plus 2 times 2, so that's 4 plus 4 is 8. And we have 3 squared plus 2 times 3, that's 9, plus 6 is 15. All right, I'm just going to stop it right at the uh, right at the t value of 2. Just because 15 is really big, I don't want to draw my graph over that far. I think going all the way to 8 will be good enough. All right, so I'm going to write the points here, the x, y points. Negative 1, 0. 0, 1. And again, these are coming from the uh, x, y coordinates, not the t values. 3, 2, and 8, 3. All right, so let's go ahead and plot these. All of our x coordinates are positive. So let's go ahead. I'm going to take these little marks off of here. And we're going over 3. 4, 5, 6, 7, why can I count? 4, 5, 6, 7, there's 8, maybe I can erase the 10 mark, not super important, all right. What are the y values? They should be the integers from 1 to 0 to 3, so let's take the 4 out. All right, so these points right here, these four points, negative 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and next up is 0, 1, and then 3, 2, 8, 3. All right, so we have these four points, and we're going to connect them together. I'll use this red right here. Okay, they don't stop at 8. It keeps going to the right. Uh, our particular function does stop here because t did not go any further uh, past negative 1. You could write t as negative 1 here, t equals 0 there, I think we had t equals 3 here, but that's not necessary. The only thing uh, that that's useful for is when we orient the line, we put an orientation on it in increasing t values, so this will orient left to right. Alright, we need to answer this on this graph, however, so let's think about what this will look like. We happen to have a quadratic function. So this had a t squared that made it quadratic. So quadratics typically are happy or sad parabolas. However, our quadratic opened to the right. Our quadratic actually looked like this. Uh, if we graph the bottom half, it would look like that. It's going to open sideways to the right. So that's what our quadratic is going to look like. Again, you should imagine this having, if our t values went more negative, you would get the bottom half of this quadratic. You could also have a quadratic opening that direction to the left. So typically you're thinking of parabolas, you're thinking of these those open up and down, but it just as easily could open to the right 
or to the left. So let's keep that in mind as we look at our options here. All right, some obvious ones that aren't it. It's neither of these uh, sine cosine functions. It's not any of these circle or ellipse. This is an exponential, not that. Does not have any vertical asymptote. Does not look like absolute value. It's not a line. All right, so now we're starting to narrow down here. This parabola is opening up or down, and that's not what we have here. Okay, so we're starting to get a little warmer here. You probably see the one it already is, but I wanna talk about why it's not, uh, it's not gonna be this one because this one increases, it does go up to the right, but it goes more and more up. Our graph went more and more right. So it's not this. So we're really narrowing it down here. Now both of these have the right shape. You might be thinking, oh, it's obviously not this one because it doesn't go downwards right here. Yes, that's true for our case, but let's think of the difference between these two. The one on the left is a quadratic. And the one on the right is a cubic. Cubic meaning it'll have a cubed a cube term quadratic means it has a squared term. So we're gonna go with this quadratic. All right, when it comes to actually graphing this, let's look back at our graph. What we're gonna need is a vertex and a second point. The vertex you do not have a choice on. So our vertex is gonna be this point right here. Your second point, however, you can choose zero, one, or three, two, or eight, three, if you really want. Uh, but I, I would either choose zero, one, or three, two as my second point. 